verse number 22. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. And then chapter 2 and verse number 2. And the woman conceived and bare his son. And when she saw him, that he was God, goodly, a goodly child, she hid him for three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and dashed it with a slime within and pitch without and put him in, put the child therein, and she laid him in the flags in the riverbank. I want to preach today from this thought where crocodiles won't go, where crocodiles won't go. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank God. Today is the official day that we, you know, have... Uh, we honor Mother's Own, and here in America, over 60 million mothers will be being honored on this uh, Mother's Day time. And so whether you are rich or whether you're poor, you still pause to pay tribute to the best-loved person in all the world, and that is mother. So if your mother's still alive today, you need to make an effort, if it's possible, to go and see her. If not, to at least pick up the phone and give her a call. And for those of us who our mothers have passed away it's always a good time to just pause and remember how much your mother has meant to you. Yesterday we took the time to go to the cemetery where my mother and Sister Smith's mother uh, are buried and to pay tribute to them and just to uh, remind ourselves of how blessed we were to have godly mothers. And um, on Mother's Day we also uh, dedicate babies because there's nothing more beautiful than a baby in its mother's arms. And so... All the um, great uh, women of this church that have never really uh, been able to have a child because of nature, thank God we give you honor today also because many of you have meant so much to this church in helping us to care for the emotional and the hurts of those that come through here for the church to minister to because really the church is a mother in itself because we are, you know, the bride of Christ and we represent so much and so we honor you today and thank you for everything you share and give of yourself to help all of us care for uh, the, the children of this church. So everyone here today, uh, we say we honor you. Thank God. And one of the best love uh, mothers, Mother Teresa of all the world, never had a child, but yet and still she was uh, honored as the mother of thousands because of her giving of herself to others. And so I want to talk to you today about a mother that changed our world because she made up her mind that the crocodiles was not going to get her baby. And she put him in a place where the crocodiles would not go. In our text, we read about how that Pharaoh um, had passed a decree that every boy baby that was born was to be thrown into the Nile River. The Nile River was infested with crocodiles. So every mother knew that when that baby was born, if it was a boy, that it was fixing to be jerked out of our arms and taken and thrown to the crocodiles. Now, it is said that no reptile can equal the, the fierceness of the Nile crocodile. The Nile crocodile is, is the largest freshwater reptile. It weighs up to, can go up to 2,000 pounds. It can get as lengths of 20 feet long. And they are very aggressive and they are capable of taking down almost any kind of animal they have no respect of anything. They are called the king of the predators of the water because of their fierceness in uh, getting their prey. And also they, they hunt on land. They are uh, apt to, they like to hunt at night on land. They like to lay ambush. They like to lay along paths and along roadways. And as uh, uh, someone or something approaches or goes down those pathways, they they grab them, and if they're close enough, they'll drag them into the river to drown them, or else they will just um, kill them in that process. And even today, the Nile crocodile is estimated to kill hundreds, if not thousands, of people. Thank God. The reason they don't have an exact number is because many of these things never get reported because of, obviously, uh, the uh, nature of the people that they're, they're attacking and things. But um, they are a very aggressive animal. They kill more than all other uh, species of crocodiles, the Nile crocodile. And so the Nile crocodile is a very fierce thing. And so every mother knew uh, when uh, their baby was born, if it was a boy, it was going to be taken and thrown to the crocodiles in the river. 
And God, and so while other mothers wept and cried as their babies were taken from them, uh, Jochebed, thank God, the mother of Moses, made up her mind that she was going to do everything she could to protect her baby and to keep it from the crocodiles because this is something uh, more powerful than a crocodile, and that is the love of a mother that made up her mind that nothing was going to get her baby. And so for three months, um, you know, she was able to, to hide the baby, and she had done uh, everything that she knew to do. You know, some people say, well, I'm praying for my children, but after that you pray, you know, there's some things that you need to do. And all through the Bible we see mothers that made a difference in their children because they, they, they prayed and then they acted. Thank God. There would have never been a Samuel if there hadn't have been a Hannah. And there would have never um, been a Joseph if there hadn't have been a Rachel that said, give me child or else I die. There would have never been a, an Isaac if there hadn't have been a Sarah that at 90 years of age conceived and brought forth a son. And Elizabeth and John the Baptist and the little boy that packed, uh, mother that packed the sack lunch so that Jesus could make a miracle of 5,000. And then Timothy that had a grandmother, Lois, and a mother, Eunice, that paid um, him, uh, prepared him so that he could go into the work of God. And so mothers, you really do matter. Mothers matter. You don't know how much you do matter in all of uh, the lives of your children. Thank hey God. And I know that uh, some today, um, Mother's Day is a tough day for you because you have lost uh, a child. Thank God. And so it, it's, it's a hard thing to uh, have to be here today and talking about mothers and, and all the love. But while some of you, it's been a long time, others of you, the tears are still wet on your cheek from the grief of loss of losing a child. But uh, we know that God is the greatest comfort to their all. And I pray that God will comfort you uh, in your time of even having to remember of losing a child. But those of us that you have children today and they're still alive, you need to make up your mind that you're going to make a difference and not let your children, thank God, become a victim to this society and to the perversions and to uh, the lawlessness of the world that we live in today. Thank God, we, we need mothers that refuse to let the crocodiles of this world swallow up their children, that set their affections on things above and not on things below. Praise God. Thank God. And the best thing you can do, first and foremost, is to live a godly life before your children. Thank God. And teach them by example and not by just trying to tell them. Thank God. And, and, and pass them on to, uh, pass those examples and those principles on to your children. Thank God. When uh, your children, uh, there is no second chance. You know, you just get one shot at raising your children. And so you have had... Uh, your, your baby dedicated today and some of you need to understand that uh, in the first few years of their life is the most important years. Moses' mother only had him for seven years but what she put in him in seven years Pharaoh, Pharaoh couldn't take out in 33 years. Thank God. When he was 40 years of age he realized that you know I don't want to be an Egyptian. Thank God, I want to be like my mother's people, and I'm going back to my mother's people. And he rejected Pharaoh's palace and Pharaoh's honor just to be, thank God, uh, in the presence of God's people and to be a part of them. And mothers, I want you to know that you matter to those um, first few years of their child's life because it's so important in making that special bond with them. Thank God, Jochebed had to do uh, something besides just pray. Thank God. She had to make the ark and she had to prepare uh, it so she realized that when that ark was finished that she wanted to put it in a place where the crocodiles would not go. And um, there are some things that you, you have, you're going to have to do because um, faith without works is dead. And so it's not enough just to believe God. You've got to have um, faith with that. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse number 8 says, My son, hear the instructions of your father and forsake not the law of your mother. Thank God. And so the Bible says fathers gives instructions, but mothers know how to lay down the law. Thank God. And you know the old saying, if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. Praise God. And most of us know what that means. Thank God. If you was raised with a, 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 a mother like I was raised with, uh, you like for mother to be happy because if mama was happy everything was good and so we we learn our fathers give instructions but our mothers know how to lay down the law and so when dad speaks it's instruction but when mom speaks it becomes law 
And mom learned how to lay down the law in love because there is something about a mother's love that will get more accomplished than a dad's um, a strong arm, you know, and something about your instructions. And so pray and believe God for your child is a, is a great thing to do. And then you have to put some works with your faith. And God, fathers, we need to give some instructions. And mothers, we need to uh, set the rules and set the boundaries so that they'll know. And so after three months, she could hide the child no longer. And so she built the ark. But the whole plan was, when it was all said and done, is that that ark was going to have to be put into that Nile River. But there are places in the Nile River that um, crocodiles won't go. One theory that I heard or one person's um, uh, source of information that I got said that there's a type of reed that grows uh, that, that uh, crocodiles are allergic to and that they won't get around those reeds. And the Bible says that um, Moses' mother got some flag and some... Uh, uh, bull rushes, and that's what she made that ark out of. And so if that is true, then that's why that she put the baby in the reeds where that she put him is so that he wouldn't go there. And some, But I wasn't able to document that, and so I'm not sure if that's true or not, but it's true. I like the way it sounds. Thank God. But the other is, is that um, crocodiles don't like salt water. And the Nile River where it opens and enters into uh, the Mediterranean Sea has salt water there. And so possibly it was a place like that that she laid him. But wherever Jochebed laid Moses, it was a place that she knew that crocodiles would not go. And we know that it was a place where crocodiles didn't go because the very day that she did that, or maybe it wasn't the first day she did that. I don't know how long that Moses was put in that situation because the Bible says that um, his older sister, Miriam, that was 11 years of age, was set to sit behind, to always be watching to make sure everything's okay. And when the baby would cry, if nothing was going on, she would go over and comfort the baby. And she was always there watching to make sure that everything was okay with the baby. But on one occasion, Pharaoh's daughter came there to bathe. And so I know she wasn't going where crocodiles go. And because Jacobed had put him in a place where that she knew that crocodiles wouldn't go. And it's not... Um, you know, the husband, it's not the Sunday school teacher, it's not your youth leader, it's not your pastor, thank God, that can make that ark like a mother can make it, thank God. But it's the mother, and she took that responsibility of protecting her child and doing whatever she had to do. And mothers, you need to build something where the crocodile of drugs won't go, where the crocodile of alcohol won't go, where the crocodile... <laughs> Praise God. I'm telling you, you can put some things down. You can set your house and just say, hey, not in this house. Praise God. It might be happening over there, but it's not going to happen in this house. And mothers, you can put a hedge about your house. You can build a hedge there. Thank God that things aren't going to be there. Thank God that uh, pornography is not going to come into my house, that uh, things that are uh, on the computer are not going to come into this house. Thank God I'm going to make sure that my house, those things aren't going to happen here. And I know the day uh, comes when the Jacobe had to put him, her baby, in that basket, and she had to walk away. Thank God. She did, did everything that she knew to do. And then finally, she just had to put him in God's hands. And mothers, you may have already come to that place that you've had to put your children in God's hands, that you've done all you can do, and now they have gone and they are doing their own thing. Thank God. But once you have done all you can do, thank God, you can trust God to Put, take what you put in them, thank God, and to let it come back to you. And so you can put um, the Word of God in their heart. Thank God, you can bring them to the house of God. You can get them involved in the things that go on at the church. Thank God, and, he, and everything that um, is important in their lives, it needs to have God as a part of, that, of their lives. Because I'm telling you, if you were uh, not a godly lady and if you were not bringing your child up in the house of God... If they were out in the world, you'd be going to, you know, you would be having to get them to practices. You'd have to be getting them to dance lessons. You'd be having to get them to the next party. You'd be having to get them to the next sport event. Praise God. And so I've seen parents complain because they had to bring their child to church. Thank God. That ought to be the greatest opportunity you have is, hey, something's going on at the church. Praise God. I think every time something's going on at the church, you need to make the effort, make the sacrifice. Thank God. You need to invest some time in them. Thank God. Give up some overtime. Thank God. You need to be with your family, and you need to invest in your family. And so when the crocodiles come and try to get them, thank God, there's going to be a basket there that, that they can't get to because you have 
put it in a place where that the devil can't go. Hey, God, and even uh, if there is no, um, you know, other place but your, your hands that you can keep them safe. Hey, God, you need to do everything you can. I'm going to do everything I can, and then they're going to be in God's hands. If there has ever been a day that we need strong mothers, it's today that we need them to rise up, hey, God, against the crocodiles of this world and say, no, not in this house and not on this watch, praise God, because I'm going to keep my child unto him, hey, God. And so one day, uh, you know, the, the boy was... Um, there and the next day he was a man, thank God. But that boy that Jochebed protected, thank God. The day came when he was leading three to five million people, thank God. He was the man that got the Ten Commandments, thank God. But the reason was is because he had a mother that said, uh, not my child, thank God, not my son, praise God, but I'm going to keep him. One reason you, you have a pastor here today is because of a godly mother that, that helped me to make good decisions when I would have probably done other things. And so uh, every one of us need to understand, Mother, when it's all said and done, the only thing that's going to matter is whether they're ready for the rapture or not. Thank God, whether they're ready when that trumpet sounds. That's the only thing that's going to really matter. While we're standing today, when it's this Mother's Day, um, or maybe on this Mother's Day, I believe that God has, you know, been talking to some of us today, especially to you mothers and I want every mother here today, right now, to just take a moment. I want us to just go to the throne of grace, and I want us to pray for our children and you to pray for your child. Thank God. And wherever where they're at, whatever's going on in their lives, that God is going to remember your prayer today. On this Mother's Day, that I'm going to bring my child again before the throne of God. And so let's just do that together. Let's just support them, men. Thank God, as these mothers pray today. God, I pray for every mother. I pray a special blessing on their children today, wherever they're at. God, if they're away from you, I pray that they'll remember that every prayer my mother prayed for me, every tear my mother shed for me, God, it's not going to be in vain. God, I haven't forgot her prayers. I haven't forgot those times that she tried to bring me and show me the right way. And I thank you for the godly mother that you put in my life. I pray you touch every one of these children today. We ask your blessings. Thank God. I'd like for the church to pray today because we are a mother. and There are many backslid children. There's many prodigals of this church. If all the prodigals would just come home, all the ones that have passed through this, these doors that have had um, the training and the instructions of this mother, this church, thank God, if they would just come home. And I want us to pray for the prodigals and that every prodigal will know that they are welcome to come back home. And let's just pray, church. Thank God, even today in this place, God, you know every prodigal son, every prodigal daughter, you know every need that's in this place today. God, while the crocodiles of the world is trying to devour them, God, we're coming against them in the name of the Lord. And we know that the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. And we plead your blood over every situation today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Hey, God. Hey, God. And while our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, I wonder today if there's any prodigals here today that you'd like to come back home. Hey, God. The devil's lied to you and said, well, I don't even know if they would welcome you back home. It's a lie because mother is ready for you to come home. Hey, God. And you're welcome today. Every prodigal, you're welcome today. Hey, God. Don't go another step in the wrong direction. Hey, God. But today you can take a turn, make a step in the right direction. Thank God, as you honor your mother, that you have come here today to honor, that you would just honor her, uh, just saying, God, thank you for those prayers. Thank you for every prayer, every tear, every...